Today, I'm going to be giving you 17 things I wish I knew before I visited Japan. From experience, there's definitely things you should know before even setting foot in the country of Japan to make sure you're super prepared and to make sure you have the best time possible. This country is so culturally unique and different from anywhere else I've been, and that's partly due to its geographical location and being isolated from everyone else. Now let's start with these 17 things and starting at number one in no particular order, and that is do not tip. In Japan, it is not a custom to tip, unlike America where it's pretty much forced. In Japan, if you tip, then it's actually considered a little bit rude. Japanese people are very polite and even if you get really good customer service, they're not expecting a tip. It's just not in the custom, in the culture in Japan. Now, number two is get an IC card. If you're in London, then you'll be used to the Oyster card. If you're in Sydney, you'll be used to the Opal card and basically it allows you to tap on and off of all the transportation in the big cities and allows you to get around very easily. Amelia and I used a Suica card. Amelia had the physical Suica card, but I had the Suica card on my Apple wallet. And so I didn't even need to get the physical card. You can literally download it before you're even in Japan, top it up and you're good to go from the airport. You can actually use IC cards in lots of convenience stores, vending machines. And so it's actually almost like a little debit card here in Japan. But obviously you can use your travel card if you've got one of those as well. Just touching on the Metro when you're in Osaka or Tokyo, it is so confusing. And the best way I can help you is by using Google Maps. It tells you the exact line and the platform that you need to get. It takes some time to get used to the Metro here because there are so many lines, so many stations, but just take your time and yeah, use that sweet card. Now number three, which is something really cool, is that you can actually get tax off if you're a foreigner in Japan. Now what you need to do is make sure you bring your passport with you because you need evidence that you're not living in Japan. And this only applies to things that are over 5,000 yen or 36 US dollars. I bought jeans and a hoodie when I was in Japan. I got the tax off just by showing my passport. Moving on to number four. Now this is something I already knew about and that is get a Nomad eSIM. I've been using Nomad eSIMs for some time now and they are kindly the partners of today's video. An eSIM is the easiest way to stay connected whilst you're in Japan or even abroad somewhere else. Pick from over 110 countries on the Nomad app and you can activate a data plan within five minutes directly from your phone. There's no hassle of getting a physical SIM card like the old days, just ensure you have an eSIM friendly phone. Whilst in Japan, I was using the 20 gigabyte Nomad data plan and it was so helpful for getting around the crazy confusing cities. I relied on Google Maps and Google Translate to help me out. Trust me, from experience, you need to stay connected. Unless you do speak Japanese, then you'll be fine. Right now, you can get 10% off all 10 gigabytes and above data plans using the promo code NOMADSUMMER23. The promo code will last until the end of June. Click the link in the description to download the Nomad app. And if you are new to Nomad, you can use my promo code JOEL94MB and you will get $3 off. Now, number five is something you see all the time in the UK, but it's not culturally acceptable in Japan. And that is eating and drinking whilst walking. In the UK, we're running around doing all these bits at once, but in Japan, when you're eating, you have to stand or sit to eat and drink. You're also not allowed to eat on public transport, which to be fair, makes sense. Even walking around eating a little bit of a chocolate bar is considered not really acceptable. Just something to keep in mind when you're in Japan. Now, number six is get Google Translate and download the Japanese version or make sure you've got that Nomad eSIM so you're always connected. Because I found a lot of people do not speak English and so you're gonna need Google Translate to communicate with one another. One thing to keep in mind is Google Translate does not always get their translation right. So you might have to work it out. You get some funny answers to just take everything with a pinch of salt, kind of work out what it's trying to tell you. Now, number seven is make sure you book in advance. In other countries in Southeast Asia, you don't really need to book in advance. Things don't book up, but in Japan, things book up. I'm talking restaurants, viewpoints, activities, all this stuff, hotels, obviously. If you want to stay in the best hotels for the cheapest price, book as well in advance as you can. You're just gonna get the best deals and it's gonna make sure you get the best stay possible. I wanna to talk to you guys about my very own hotel booking website. And the best thing is that these are wholesale prices. We don't have all the expensive booking fees like booking.com or Agoda. So in some cases you can save hundreds of dollars and also you can actually support me and this channel so I can keep on traveling and helping you with all these tips. I'll leave a link in the description to the hotel booking website. Other things like Team Lab Planets in Tokyo, we were very lucky to get a slot in it because we only booked like two days in advance. Especially in cherry blossom season, things book up so in advance, so just make sure you book 
in advance, I'd probably say that too many times. No, number eight, one of our best friends when we were in Japan because we were on a budget, and that is the convenience stores. You get 7-Elevens, you get Family Marts, you get Lawson's, 7-Elevens are probably the best ones in my opinion. The great thing about 7-Elevens in Japan compared to other countries is that they have really fresh 7-Eleven meals. And so you can heat it up in the microwave and you honestly get like incredible udon noodles, fried rice, all these incredible things. And I highly recommend it if you are on a budget. Convenience stores in the big cities are pretty much on every street. There are so many and it's just a very easy way to get a quick meal if you don't want to go into a restaurant. Use the ATMs in the 7-Eleven because they have the best exchange fees and honestly the 7-Eleven's everywhere so you will never be far from one. Now number nine is should you get the JR Rail Pass and that honestly depends on you and what your trip looks like. If you've got a short compact trip with loads of different cities then it's probably worth it but if not and you're on more of a budget then you can get other transport there's other ways of getting around japan there's overnight buses short mini buses you can take if you're looking to take the shinkansen which i highly recommend you do do we took the shinkansen but we didn't get the jrl pass we just got one single ticket and it worked out about 80 dollars definitely worth it if the ticket is still only $180 then a couple of trips and that's already paid off. Now a bit of a news flash in October 2023 the prices are shooting up and the JR Rail Pass is going to cost you a lot more money. Now where to get the JR Rail Pass? I would highly recommend getting it on Klook and I'll leave a link to it down in the description because they actually post it globally so even if you're traveling say in Vietnam or Thailand you can actually get it sent to your hotel and pick it up because you need to get the JR Rail Pass before you are in Japan, that is very important. The link to the JR Rail Pass on Klook is down in the description. Now number 10, something which really surprised me is that Japan is really behind on the plastic use. And so pretty much with everything, they give you a plastic bag, they give you extra plastic utensils and stuff. Also, there are no bins anywhere. You occasionally get bins under the 7-Eleven coffee machines, but they're not very common. And so often you have to use that plastic bag as your daily dustbin because you can't find any other bins. There is reason to this though and that is because there was an explosion which went off in a garbage bin and so in the 90s they got rid of all the bins or practically all the bins. Now number 11 something which really surprised me is that you can't smoke anywhere in Japan. You have to go into these designated smoking rooms or smoking areas where everyone's smoking together. It's just something to know if you are a smoker. I'm personally not a smoker. Just something to know. It's also quite interesting. Now number 12, one of the big reasons Amelia and I wanted to go to Japan is because of the food and honestly the food is unreal. It is really really good and hopefully you're going to enjoy it as much as we did. Now some recommendations is try and use the local restaurants because sometimes these are the best ones. They're cooking everything fresh, everything is just really good. But I'm going to be honest, sometimes it can be a lot because again, everything's often in Japanese and it can be quite overwhelming to translate and just not really know what you're ordering. What I recommend is using the Japanese restaurant chains. There's one for udon noodles, there's one for ramen, katsu curry. And we went to these quite a lot because it's so easy. You can go in and order the same thing or try something new. And it's often menus are in English too. I put a few of my recommendations here of the restaurant chains. And honestly, the food here are really good and they're also really affordable prices too. Before we move on to number 13, please go down there and hit the subscribe button. It honestly helps me to keep on traveling, sharing all these tips and tricks with you to help you have the best time in Japan or wherever you are traveling to. Now, number 13 is something you won't all need to know, but if you are in Japan for a while, you're gonna be doing some laundry. We use laundrettes and honestly, it was so easy and quick to use. The washer and the dryer is in the same machine and it roughly costs about 900 yen. And also the detergent, whatever the wash, the soap thing for the clothes is included so you don't even need to get like extra detergent or whatever. Now number 14 something quite surprising is that when you're on the metro it is completely silent. It's like so ridiculous because often you are super tight little sardines with everyone around you and everyone is dead silent and it actually says you're not allowed to use your mobile phone for a call not for messaging um, on the metro so that's not allowed in Japan and just kind of be respectful and follow what everyone else is doing even coming from somewhere like London where you know you get a little bit of chatter but it's known for being not that talkative in Japan Tokyo Osaka it is silent it's just mind-blowing it's quite scary in a way now number 15 is might be a bit of a surprise to you but that is when you're in a restaurant you might hear a lot of this 
and slurping in Japan is actually considered polite and it means that your noodles or your ramen or whatever you're eating is actually really good. And so if you're eating noodles, don't worry about giving a good old slurp because you're gonna be hearing a lot of people around you doing the same. Obviously in London, it's probably considered a bit unpleasant and a bit rude, but in Japan, completely fine and just go with it, join in with the culture. The other thing is once you're done in Japan, the often custom thing to do is to tidy away your food and your drinks so that it's ready for the next person. Unless you're in like a really fancy restaurant, then yeah, they'll obviously take it away for you. But yeah, most places, cheaper places, you take your food and your drinks away. Now number 16, when you're going into someone's local restaurant or hostel, guest house, or even someone's house, then you actually need to take your shoes off. This is what they do in Japan. And when you go to the toilet, there's probably gonna be a different set of slippers which you use for the bathroom or the shower itself. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Don't just walk straight into someone's house, take the shoes off. Now number 17, the very last thing that I wish I knew before visiting Japan, and that is go to Mount Fuji. But not just that, make sure you don't just take a day trip, but you spend time in the Fuji area. It is honestly one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. The snow-capped mountain of Fuji is just stunning. And if you wanna spend more time in the Japanese countryside, then I recommend staying around there, seeing the different spots. There's even a waterfall you can go see. It's honestly brilliant and I couldn't recommend it enough. Mount Fuji was one of my highlights in Japan. Now, one of the most common ways to see Mount Fuji is the fast day trips from Tokyo. But if you have more time, then I really recommend just going to Mount Fuji and spending a few days in the area. Now guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that was useful. And if you've got any other tips of customs, culture, anything, then please leave them down in the description to help other people. Thank you so much for watching. Go down and hit the like and the subscribe button right now, please. Helps me, it really does. Trust me, it really does. Thank you, see you in the next one. Bye.